welcome back to Bulgaria and welcome back to Bedin Vidin in our Football Manager 24 Builder Nation save. Hello there guys and welcome back to another episode, another season of our Builder Nation save here in Bulgaria as the manager of Bedin. We're at the start of season 11 which means we're at the start of our European campaign so we do have the league highlights to catch up on. There's also been a couple of signings, mostly youth players for future and the loan farm. Uh, obviously there's a lot of players gone out on loan as well but we are here today to take on our first game of the Champions League of course as winners of the uh, of the league last season we do go straight into the league phase so we'll start off with the transfers and then we'll get straight into the highlights and we'll take on today's live com and here we are looking at the highlights now a lot of them have came in once the transfer window opened on the 6th of sorry the 10th of June uh, at the end of last season like I say most of them are youth players they've come in to be part of the youth team to go out on loan earn some experience uh, obviously make the other clubs in Bulgaria better in terms of actual first team signings the first one is Federico Mayado he's coming for 2.5 million from Juventus uh, he's actually played for the Juventus next gen he's never actually played a game of football for Juventus I think he's a very good player I think he can definitely do a job for us as that Mazzala on attack he definitely has the attributes uh, to do that particularly good uh, and I'm quite pleased to have only picked him up for two and a half million pounds unfortunately he is injured uh, he's picked up an injury earlier on in the season he's not played too many appearances for us so far uh, he is good but he's kind of doesn't really perform too well <laughs> if we're honest he, I think he just needs a bit of time to bed in so that's the first big signing the next one is Nick Kaufman he's coming from uh, from sporting in Portugal for four million pounds again he's that sort of Mazzala player Again, he's got some good attributes for that position. Definitely one for the loan farm, though. You can see he's, he's available for the second team. Uh, he's not on the loan list as things stand. There was no interest for him, so I took him off the loan list. But he is listed as a star FBET League player. £4 million, probably paid too much for him. According to this, he does have some potential to reach as well. But at 25 years old, he's probably not going to reach that. He is also on £16,000 a week, which is quite a lot of money. Uh, he's not made a first team appearance for us yet. Um, unfortunately he is he is available for the second team again uh, he, he, he's very much in as a squad player as his contract status sort of reflects uh, so he does sort of float around the first team squad uh, until I can get a loan sorted for him and then at the end of last season the final first team player shall we say uh, we've brought in Gabriel Sosa he has come in as a defensive midfielder uh, possibly to again to look to move Ali Marungu further up the pitch he's another star FBET league player if we stick him on uh, as a half back, which is the position that we play, he's very, very good. His jump and reach at five foot nine is the only thing that lets him down. Uh, but he costs another one who we spent a lot of money on from Estudi uh, Estudiantes uh, for six million pounds. The Argentine comes in. Of course, we do have to be careful of the amount of foreigners that we have in the team. Uh, so as a result of that, he's only actually played three games for us so far this season. Um, obviously, because I can only get five foreigners in, in the match day squad. 11k a week though, again another good player, possibly one for the loan farm. Maybe we'll see how he gets on in bidding colours uh, and, and we'll go we'll go from there. In terms of the ones that have come in at the start of this season, uh, we've brought in uh, Aguildo. He is a young Brazilian with Italian nationality. He's got 1.6 million we paid for him, 18 years old. He's a very, very good up and coming striker. Has gone out on loan this season to Cherno More Varna. He's made three substitute appearances so far. I'd like him to get a little bit more first-team football than that. He's listed as a good Vittoria Liga player, so he's maybe not quite at the level uh, that Cherno need him to be at. They, uh, they currently find themselves 13th in the top flight, and he's not quite a top flight player. But he has gone there to get some experience. Obviously, you can see that he's, he's, he's got some arrows on his attributes pointing in the right direction. So hopefully that's a sign of things to come for uh, a Gildo. Uh, and in terms of the first team, we did experiment a little bit with tactics this season. And we brought in uh, Goran Duganzic from Dinamo Zagreb. 2.2 million, a 24-year-old is a left winger. Uh, like I say, we, we're experimenting a little bit with tactics. Whether I stick with it or not is, is a different matter. Uh, but he's, he's another star FBET league player. He's made four appearances, not really wowed us so far, but that could just be the tactic. Uh, but yeah, he's, he's another very good player. And only 2.2 million as well. On the outs, nothing really of note. The big one is Nikolai Young. Uh, he's gone to Inter Milan. They've paid 6.25 million for him, which is a, is a profit for us on the 2.5 that we paid for him. 
uh, didn't really play too many games for us, only nine. Uh, he does have some potential still to hit, but I think we've done okay to get 6.2 million out of Inter for him. Uh, and the rest of them have gone out on loan. If we have a quick look at the loan, we've currently got 29 players out on loan. I'd love it to be more than that. Uh, we do have a lot of uh, a lot of under 19s um, who who can go out. Second team as well is full. You can see that we've got them all on the development list. Uh, under 19s is pretty much the same. There's they're all on the development list. They're all there to go out on loan to hopefully earn some experience. Moving on to how the league has gone though, and we start off away to Baro Stara Zagora, and it was August Prisk and Christoph Danik with the two goals from a bidding point of view. Safi Ben Salem did get the goal for Baro. We, we left it late, 83rd minute. Uh, we've not played fantastically well. Still using, still well, actually using one of the new tactics that I decided to use in this one, uh, with two central defenders, five defensive midfielders, and two midfielders, uh, and it, it, we won. <laughs> Let's just say we won, uh, and it was a, it was a good way to start the season. However, next time out using that same tactic, it was a disappointing nil-nil draw against Botev Plovdiv. We did play particularly well. The the midfielders, uh, the, there's a lot of them, uh, have played quite well, as have the defence and the goalkeeper. We've only hit the target four times, though, uh, and unfortunately, the Botev goalkeeper and defence also had a good game. Uh, so drop points already so early on in the season. And we drop more in the next game with yet another new formation. This is the one that we brought the wingers in for, uh, Mayado and Duganzic. Uh, unfortunately, we did lose to Spartak Varna, of course, last season in Europe. Uh, the beaters, Mayado missed a penalty in the 45th minute, which obviously would have earned us, or would have put us in the lead, shall I say, and possibly earned us a point. Their goalkeeper has picked up the Man of the Match award, though. So it's not like we've played badly, we just haven't taken our chances. Unfortunately, the two wingers did play quite badly, uh, and it's it's... At this stage, it's sort of in my my thinking of uh, do we continue with this tactic or do we go back to uh, to what we know? We stuck with it though in the next game against Pirin Blagravad. Uh, Timo Mass with a double, a very very late winner, 96th minute winner, and that was after Pirin equalised in the 94th minute. So everything happened in injury time in this game. Uh, Milid Zaoui with the uh, his first goal for the club though. I'm not sure if we showed Milid. I think he signed in January last year, so we've possibly met Milid before 19 year old Algerian though he's got bags and bags of potential uh, he's come in as another one to play as that defensive midfielder again he's really really good in that position uh, so we may see a lot more of him in future but we did pick up the win in this one stuck with the wingers Syracos came in for this one played very very well uh, Duganzic not so great again uh, but it's three points and again we've used the the wingers in this one and it's another 3-2 win and it's another one where we've won it in injury time at the end of the game Syracos picking up a hat-trick his 91st minute penalty, securing all three points for Loka, uh, for, for Bidin against Locomotive Sofia. We're not playing very well with this tactic. We were scraping by teams and uh, by the skin of our teeth, really. And as a result of that, we went back to what we know in the next one. We've gone back to uh, to, to the, the tactic we've used for the last couple of seasons, away to Levski Sofia, and we've picked up a 2 0 win in this one. 2 uh, 0, 2 1, sorry. I beg your pardon. Uh, August Prisk and Babe Kampore with the only goals of the game. Levski had more shots than us. Uh, they, we've had more of the ball. Uh, we just we played quite well. Gabriel Sosa played well as that defensive midfielder. Obviously, Prisk has played well. Timo Mass was in for this one. Uh, it's a good performance uh, for, from us to pick up a win against Levski. Next time out was a 1-0 win over Lokomotiv Plovdiv. It took an own goal, though, after 35 minutes. Uh, again, we're not firing. Prisk has played quite well, but he's not really... Well, he hasn't scored, has he? Which is his job. That's what he's in the team to do. Subic picks up the man of the match performance. Again, using our familiar tactic. 1-0 uh, win. Much, much better next time out against Cherno Morvana, though. Tabi and Barga, August Prisk with a double, and Slobdan Rengel with the goals. It was 3-0 at half-time. August Prisk, man of the match performance. Played very, very well. Samuel, not so great up top. Uh, Dario, okay in the middle of the park as that at, uh, advanced playmaker. Ali Marungu's had a, a stormer of a game, though, in this one. Picking up an assist with three key passes as well. We've played very, very well and deserved the win. Unfortunately, we couldn't keep that momentum going and we dropped points next time out against Slavia Sofia. Timo Mass with the only goal of the game from a bidding point of view. But again, we conceded early on. Mokhtar Badien with the uh, the goal for Slavia. Their goalkeeper has picked up the line of the match. We've hit the target 12 times in this game, so we have played well. Their goalkeeper's just had a bit of a worldy, and, and August Prisk and Samuel again with some poor performances up top, and it brought bringing Timo Mass on 
uh, in the 63rd minute for Samuel uh, to, to secure a point for us. But we have won our most recent game and that was a 3-1 win away from home against CSK. Sofia Villet Vahunig, Toninho Guerrero and Slobodan Rengel with the goals for Bidin. We did go behind again in this game though through Martin Sorokov. But again, we've been the much, much better team uh, and we thoroughly deserved the win. So where that leaves us in terms of the table, somehow uh, we're, we're at the top of the table by three points. Uh, obviously, Ludogrets have not had the best of starts either. They've lost two of their games. We've not been fantastic. We've conceded 10 goals, which is actually quite a lot after 10 games. It's a goal a game. It's, it's quite poor for the, the champions, really. Uh, so, But luckily, we do find ourselves at the top of the table. Uh, we've got Klimas in the highest average ratings. In terms of goals, we, we're struggling. August Prisk is down here with four, uh, whereas Habib Sane has got a nine at the top. Uh, player of the match, though, Prisk with three. It, it's not great, not great, really, in terms of, uh, in terms of where we're at, um, in terms of goal scoring and, and the goals conceded. It's possibly because I've been playing around with the, the tactic, though. In terms of where Bidin find themselves in Europe, we've moved up to 40th place. That's the last season's great run that we had in Europe. Uh, 40th place is very, very good for a team like Bidin. We are now the most reputable team in uh, Bulgaria. We've overtaken the likes of Ludogorets. Uh, Levski, Ludogorets actually dropped down to the f the the fourth most reputable team in Bulgaria. Levski, Sofia and CSK 1948 have both overtaken them, uh, but we find ourselves uh, pretty clear at the top now. We're doing very, very well. And in terms of the nations, still in 10th place, we are now chasing down Belgium and Turkey. That's our next two targets, the closest of which is Belgium. So we'll be keeping an eye on how the Belgian teams do in Europe, uh, which currently 13 points behind Belgium though. Only eight behind Turkey, so maybe Turkey is the one that we should be aiming for, but that's the target for the season. Right guys, now that we're all caught up with how things are going, the new signings and how we're getting on in the league, I did say that I wasn't sure what stage of the Champions League we go into this season. It turns out we've gone straight into the league phase, uh, which is good. And these are the teams that we've been drawn against. We've been drawn against Newcastle, Feyenoord, Sevilla, Napoli, RB Salzburg, Marseille, Atleti Madrid, and Milan. So we have faced some of these sides before. We've beaten some of them. We've been heavily beaten by by others. Newcastle is a new side to us, though. Uh, that is going to be today's live com in a minute. We'll meet some of the new signings properly. In terms of what I've been doing with the tactic this season, I've, I've been sort of mixing it up. I've decided to stop doing the tactic tests in this save. Uh, I need a bit of stability to help some of the, the players grow a bit. And obviously, we'll we'll see what happens in a minute. But there, we're ready. Let's let's get into the game. We'll, uh, we'll meet the sides. We'll meet some of the new players. And this is what we're going to play with today. It's one that I found on FM Scout. Uh, it's called the Unbreakable 4-3-3. I've not really played too much football with it. Uh, I've also still got... Uh, I've got it loaded twice. <laughs> I've still got... Uh, I've got an Arteta's 4-2-2-2, which I haven't played with yet. This is still supposed to be second yellow cards. Uh, tactic, which obviously... Um, is, is done us so well so far. This is the main one that we're using. But for today, it is going to be the unbreakable uh, 4-4-2. Now, Sato is going to have to start in goal. Adam perhaps had a little bit of an injury. He, he's back to fitness in two days, but I don't want to risk it. So it is going to be, uh, it's going to be Sato. Now, in terms of registering players, it's been quite difficult. Again, uh, I, I automatically did it and pressed confirm. And I thought, oh no, it's less, left Prisk out. And I couldn't change it. I couldn't go back and change it. So I've made a mistake there. I wanted Prisk in. Uh, you can see all the players that we've got unregistered. Lots of first team players. Lots of youth team players as well. Uh, obviously a lot of them out on loan. Lima's is currently unhappy because he wants to move to a, a club with a stronger squad. Which you know he'll get over. Ali Marungu is still wanted. This time by Saudi. Ariel's wanted. Tanina Guerrero is wanted. Klimis is still wanted. Vahunig's wanted. Uh, I, I'm prepared to sell Vahunig if I can get the right money for him. Uh, of course, we didn't pay anything for him, and that got him valued at 11.25 million. So, if somebody comes in with that, he can go. <laughs> He's replaceable. But it's in terms of the lineup for today, it's going to be Koji Sato starting a goal. Really, really good goalkeeper uh, for for us. A very, very good backup. Lima playing as a fullback on defence. He can play there. Uh, he can play as a fullback on defend. Maybe not his best position. He is better as that wing back, slightly up higher the pitch. But he's uh, still a very, very good player for us. Is Lima Tonino Guerrero is going to start today instead of either Rengel or Martican. They have played a lot of football for us this season. Have Rengel and Martican. Tonino Guerrero not so much. Only made three appearances so far. Uh, Ariel 
really, really good player for us. I I'm just so disappointed about his height and his jumping reach. I, I wish it was so much better uh, than what it is. But he is a very good defender. Great value on him. He's also wanted. It's possible that we could look to move Ariel on. Uh, obviously, I don't want to weaken us. Subic on the left, still okay. Not great in the air, not great going forward, but he's, he's quick, he's physical. He's okay at defending. Definitely an area that can be improved. Midfield three of Ali Marungu continues. Obviously wanted by Sauri. Arsenal came in with £30 million in the end for him. Uh, was was the total bid. It was £30 million, obviously, add-ons and stuff like that. And the board accepted it. And I protested it. I said, no. I said, no, you're not letting him go. Uh, and they, they agreed with me and they cancelled it. So he's still here. He, he wasn't too upset about it either, to, to be fair to him. Uh, midfield two, Danik continues. We do have some new midfielders, which obviously you've seen in the transfers. But Danik continues uh, today, 30 years old, at that kind of value. I, and what we paid for him, I may look to move him on. He is a, a fan favourite, though, which is, you know, not really something you want to be moving on. In terms of midfielders as well, if, if we uh, stick that on mid-centre, he's, he's quite a bit down the pecking order, according to my assistant. Uh, so if I can get that kind of money for Danik, then I'll, I'll look to move him on. Dario, signed from Barcelona last season, continues in midfield. He's uh, He's got some very, very good attributes, first touch, determination, passing, all, all really, really good. Sirikos going to start on the right-hand side for us today. Lack of options, really, on that right wing. I do have one of our other new signings in Mayado, but he's actually currently injured. But he can definitely play as that uh, that attacking winger. You know, he, I prefer him there to Sirikos, if, if I'm being honest. But we paid 2.5 million from Juventus for him. Uh, Duganzic, I'm going to go with. 2.2 million signing from Dinamo Zagreb. On that left-hand side, he's 24 years old. He's on 11.25k per season. He's not really lit the world on fire for us yet, but we are basically sticking with the second yellow card system uh, as much as we can because we've got the players for that. Uh, and Goran doesn't quite fit into that system with him being a left winger, unfortunately. Slight improvements since he's come to the club, though. Looking at his uh, the arrows on here, but he is a very, very good winger. Uh, hopefully, he can start finding his form for his in as a squad player, so he's not going to be too concerned if he's not starting every game. Uh, and then up top, it is the aforementioned Philip Verhunig, who, if he goes for 11.25 million, he can go. But El Al Itihad uh, are currently after him. It's this that I don't like. He had, don't get me wrong, he's done okay for us, one in two virtually. Uh, but the fact that we paid nothing for him and I can possibly get that for him, and he doesn't like big matches, um, it, you know, he, he can go. So the players come out then uh, to St. James's Park. I, I, I'm probably going to need a wash after we've been here, being a, being a Sunderland fan. <laughs> Apologies to any Newcastle fans out there uh, watching. But uh, this is the team that they've managed to assemble this far into the save. They've still got Alexander Isaac, Curtis Jones is there, uh, Billy Gilmore, Ethan Ampadu. Uh, Sven Botman's still, still kicking about. Um, it's, it's okay, isn't it? Uh, let's see how we get on. Of course, I'm only joking. St. James's Park is a, it's a fantastic stadium. I can, I can even say that as, as a Mackham. Uh, I was, I was absolutely outraged when Mike Ashley changed the name of it. Uh, <laughs> but uh, no, let's see how we get on. It is Billy Gilmore finding Ethan Ampadu. We've got a kickoff highlight here, which is, which is not great. We're not expecting anything against Newcastle. We're expecting them to absolutely twonk us, to be honest. Uh, but Ribeiro with the first foray forward for Newcastle does. Subic quite well. Sato comes out absolutely flaps it. Gets nowhere near it. Ball comes to Gilmore. Inside to Santa Polo. They've got it across for Xavi Simmons. Uh, and we've, we're have we behind after 30 odd seconds uh, in, at St. James's. And they're looking dangerous again. It's Jones. Tonino Guerrero gets his head on it though. It finds a Dario with it. Dario looking to get us away. Verhunig. He's got the runner ahead of him. Did Syracos stay on side? Syracos bearing down on goal. Syracos. It's a good save by Brits in goal. For Newcastle uh, that was definitely one that we needed to capitalize on there we had the counter attack we had the man over anyway the corner comes in towards Tanio Guerrero it's headed clear by uh, Amadocic or, or however you pronounce his name I'm sure he played for he's this Sheffield United player isn't he Ach, Ahmed Hodzic I think it's pronounced Sheffield United yes Sheffield United Newcastle signed him for 36 million pounds in this universe anyway coming to 20 minutes it's it's the Ahmed Hodzic, I'll probably never get his name right, guys. Uh, ball finds its way to Santa Polo, into Curtis Jones. Now Gilmore. Gilmore with the effort and Billy Gilmore 
scores to make it 2-0 to Newcastle with less than 20 minutes played. Right, can we get back into this game? It's a short corner given to Danik. Uh, Duganzic loses out to Xavi. Uh, Xavi Simmons looks to get it clear, but there's nobody there and Ariel picks it up. Ariel feeding it forward to Danik. Danik comes back to Subic. Into Danik again. Are we going anywhere with this, boys? Ariel, Ali Marungu. Ali Marungu switches out to Dario. Dario with a little bit of room to move into. He's got Danik inside of him. Nice move. Nice move from Danik. Yes, get in. Christoph Danik scores against Newcastle to reduce that deficit and that poor start that we've had. And that is the way it stays till half time, guys. 2 1 to Newcastle at St. James's Park. Right, 65 minutes on the clock, guys. You can see that we're, we're not used to playing with, with a different formation. Uh, Syracos and Duganzic are both playing really, really poor. So we're going to switch it up. We are going to switch it up. We're going to get Syracos to go up top. And the way, the way that we do this, we only have to make one substitution. All we have to do is bring Rengel on for Duganzic. Uh, Syracos hopefully can pick up his uh, buck up his ideas uh, back in a, a more familiar role for him. Uh, and that's, that's, it's as simple as that. We, we've just changed our style completely, making one substitution. Uh, let's get the game back underway. Hopefully that makes a little bit of a difference for us and we can get back into this game because this the second half's been very, very quiet so far. Nothing much has happened. Uh, we're not totally out of the game as Curtis Jones takes this free kick. Subic gets up, heads it a clear. Bakayoko picks it up though. Curtis Jones again. This is going to be 3-1. Adam uh, Sato with a save. Sorry, Adam Papp's injured, isn't he? Ethan Ampadu keeps it alive. Finds it Weldon. Weldon for Am Ampadu again. The Welshman crosses it. Danik gets it clear. Heads it out. Very, very good header from Christoph Danik under his own crossbar there. And now here is Brits for Newcastle. Finds Sven Botman. Sven Botman gives it to Santopolo. Santopolo to Kamara. Back to Brits. Well done. Newcastle just toying with us at the minute. Akmek Hodzic on the right-hand side. Well cut out by Subic. This is the opportunity for bidding. Can we can we capitalise? Subic with the ball in. Headed clear by Santopolo. Gives it to Syracos. Syracos gets it back across. Botman heads it clear. Ampadu helps it further on. But Subic keeps it alive for a bidding point of view uh, but it does look like Newcastle are going to settle down no they're giving it straight to Dario Dario for Verhoenig yes no VAR go away go away VAR oh oh well, I thought we'd pressured them into a mistake there no oh. I can't even argue with it he's off He's off. And unfortunately, guys, that is the way it stays. Andrea Santopolo picks up another man-of-the-match performance. Uh, it came through the Real Madrid Academy. That looks like a... I was going to say looks like a, quite a tidy player, but he's, he's not that special, really, is he? Obviously, he's better than uh, he's better than Subic at left-back. I bet he costs an arm and leg as well. Yeah, 62 to £92 million. Pounds. That's not the kind of money that we've got. I think, ultimately, we played quite well there. Syracuse has had a poor performance though uh, it's disappointing to lose so where that defeat leaves us in the champions league is uh, currently down in 32nd place we are the only bulgarian team who have made it to the champions league group phase though uh, which is which is of course is disappointing but the two nations ahead of us in the coefficients which is our target for this season uh, turkey and belgium unfortunately galatasaray did win but they're the only representatives of turkey in the champions league uh, we do have the belgian teams we've got uh, we've got genk and we've got club bruges in here as well uh, genk uh, are yet to play in the league phase but uh, club bruges did lose they lost quite comfortably to psv eindhoven uh, so that's good for us uh, as long as we can do that so the other three bulgarian teams find themselves in the europa league they're all in the they've all made it to the league phase uh, of course we had levski sofia in the champions league they lost in the qualifying playoff, though, uh, which dropped them into the uh, the Europa League. In terms of uh, Belgium, we've got Anderlecht in here. That's about it. But we do have three Turkish sides in here. Trabzonspor, uh, Fenerbahce and Istanbul Başakşehir. here. So hopefully they have a quite poor season. Unfortunately, we don't have anybody in the Conference League. Uh, Ardı Karjali failed to qualify for Europe this season. Uh, we've got uh, one Turkish team in here as well. Uh, that's it. That's it. So that's, that's our target for this season. Beat the Belgian and the Turkish teams uh, and obviously do quite well ourselves. Oh, we do have a Belgian team. We've got Antwerp in here uh, as well as Besiktas. So that's going to be it for, for this episode, guys. Uh, thank you very much for watching. 
we are going to be back same as the last couple of seasons depending on how well we do in in the group phase really um if we come back and we've already qualified for the 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 knockout rounds obviously we'll do the draw we'll do the knockout rounds and uh we'll, we'll, we'll go from there if if we borderline going to qualify we'll come back and we'll do the final game of the actual league phase uh, that's going to be it though like i said thank you very much for watching as always guys we will be back next time to take on whoever it may be uh, yeah thanks guys i'll see you later